Hello, my name is Joyce Harper and I work at University College in London. And I've been working in the field of IVF since 1987. And then in 1992, I started working on pre-implantation genetic diagnosis at the Hammersmith Hospital. At University College, I've run two master's courses in reproductive science and prenatal genetics. And I've been working with Genesis Athens for many years, doing various collaborations. So they have asked me today to talk to you about pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. So pre-implantation genetic diagnosis is for couples who are at risk of transmitting a particular disease to their child. So they may know they're at risk because they may have had an affected child, they may have other members, family members affected with the abnormality, or they may have been diagnosed as an adult for things like breast cancer. So for these couples, they've got a very difficult reproductive journey. They obviously want to have a child who's free from the disease that they're carrying, and so this is what we do in pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. There are other options for them. They could decide not to have any children or to have prenatal diagnosis, but PGD is the option for some people. So pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, or PGD, is where the couples go through IVF, so they go through the same procedures that infertile couples go through. We generate the embryos outside the body, and then we can do an embryo biopsy where we take one or two of the cells, and then with those cells, from each embryo, we will then do our genetic test. So when we've done this, we're testing for genetically normal or carrier embryos with the aim that we'll put back the embryos that are unaffected with the disorder. And also, some patients carry chromosome abnormalities, and we can determine which embryos have normal chromosomes or balanced chromosomes, and we'll transfer those to the patient. So as I've said, the aim is to transfer an embryo that will develop into a healthy child for these couples. So the indications for pre-implantation genetic diagnosis are patients carrying a genetic abnormality, patients carrying a chromosome abnormality, and also something you may have heard of called HLA typing or save your sibling. And this is where the couple may have a child with an existing disorder that may be lethal to the, that child. And we can, they can go through PGD and we can generate embryos that tissue match the existing child. And then at birth, we can take stem cells from the cord blood and use that hopefully to cure the um, sick child, the existing child. So that's called HLA typing. And around the world now, there's numerous, uh, many IVF clinics that uh, offer PGD as well. And over 350 diseases have been diagnosed by PGD. There's also another procedure I just want to mention called pre-implantation genetic screening. This may be mentioned to you when you come for your IVF treatment. And this is a treatment for couples that are going through IVF anyway because of infertility. So they're slightly different than our PGD couples. The PGD couples are have, having a genetic abnormality. These couples are just routine IVF patients. And we can use the procedures that we do in PGD to look at embryos for their chromosomes and determine which embryos are chromosomally normal. And the aim of this is to try and improve delivery rates for IVF patients. So the indications for PGS are patients with advanced maternal age. So these are women that may be over 35 or 38. As, as we age, we know that the chromosomes in our eggs start becoming faulty, and these can lead to chromosome abnormalities in the embryos. Recurrent IVF failure. There's many reasons for recurrent IVF failure, but one of them may be due to the chromosome. So it may be useful to have a look at it using this test. Some patients have recurrent miscarriage. Again, many reasons for this. Well, one of them may be chromosome abnormalities in the embryos, <coughs> or also when there's severe male factor infertility. So I mentioned before that you have to go through IVF to have PGD or PGS, and what we'll then do in the laboratory is we'll add on two steps. We'll do a biopsy where we remove some of the embryo to take the cells out, and then we'll do our very um, high-tech genetic diagnosis on those just few cells to determine which embryos are okay to transfer. So there's three ways that biopsy can be done. It can be done here, a stage called polar body biopsy, where we take small structures in the egg and the early embryo to look at the chromosomes. Um, what we call cleavage stage biopsy, where we'll just take a cell out from the embryo when it's around about eight cells. And something that's becoming very popular globally now uh, uh, blastocyst biopsy, where we take some of the cells from the embryo when it's about day five of development. 
And a lot of work on this has been done by uh, Georgia Kakoli, uh, who works at Genesis, Genesis Athens, and she's pub published many groundbreaking uh, papers on this topic. Now, when we do the diagnosis on our cells, it, as I said, it's very high tech, and I won't go through the details with you today. But one thing you may have heard about is using arrays. We can use these uh, new technology, which is very sensitive, called arrays. And with the arrays, each one of these uh, shaded parts represents a chromosome. And anything above or below these lines would be an abnormality. And we can see here at chromosome 10, there's a whole, all these dots for chromosome 10 are above the line. And that means there's an abnormality of that chromosome. So as I've said, I've been collaborating with Genesis Athens for many years. Genesis Athens were one of the first centres in Greece to perform PGD, which they've been doing since 2001. And as I've said, the world leaders in blastocyst biopsy, especially from George's work on that. And blastocyst biopsy now is becoming one of the main techniques globally. It's becoming quite popular now to do blastocyst biopsy, then vitrify the embryos, and then do the diagnosis over the next one or two months, and then transfer the warmed embryos back in a future cycle. So I hope you found, found that informative. If you want any more information about PGD, then please ask the team at Genesis Athens and they'll be able to tell you. Thank you.